But first, as principal at Blaine Elementary School in Lakeview, Troy LaRavier was one of Mayor Emanuel's harshest critics. He spoke out against the privatization of school janitorial services, charter schools, and the lack of sufficient funding for special ed. He was also critical of the use of what he said were excessive standardized tests to judge schools and student performance. He resigned as Blaine principal in 2016 amid a disciplinary process for insubordination that he called a kangaroo court. Now he's running for mayor and joining us is Troy LaRavier. LaRavier is currently the president of the Chicago Principals and Administrators Association and welcome back to Chicago tonight. First of all you were and um, are presumably an outspoken critic of Mayor Emanuel and believe he played a role in your leaving your job. To what extent is this personal? Uh, not at all. I think you, ha you have to not have paid any attention to the last five years of my life to think this is anything personal. If it were personal, then I wouldn't have said anything before this happened. But I've been an outspoken critic for years before that happened because the thing that was at the center of it was this system's abject neglect incompetence and corruption that I saw impacting the lives and the education of my students. So it was my desire to see them realize their human potential that led me to speak out. And it's my desire to see them, their families and their communities realize their human potential that has led me to this, this decision to run for mayor. Uh, Laura Washington recently wrote a column where she said the more opponents that Rahm Emanuel has, the better it is for Rahm Emanuel. What, uh, what are your thoughts about his political vulnerability? Well, I don't really think in terms of the, the opponents. I think about what my campaign has to be. My campaign has to enlist those folks who have been banging on the doors of City Hall for decades and being ignored. The people, there are people right here in Chicago that have the solutions, that have been working on these solutions their entire adult lives, who have been ignored. Uh, the brilliance that we need to succeed in this city exists. I need to enlist them, make this campaign their campaign, use it to uplift their voices, um, and create a compelling vision for what this city uh, needs to look like. And in creating that compelling vision, that's what's going to lead to the success of my campaign, no matter who's running. Uh, let's, get, let's pick up on the conversation that Eddie was having with Ralph Martyr. They discussed the issues facing the Park District Pension Fund. As you know, in terms of the teachers, Chicago Public School Teachers uh, Pension Fund, an outside consultant mm -hmm. recently said that it was $11 billion in the hole. How would you fix those pension issues? You know, the first thing we have to do is be honest about how we arrived at these issues and have an honest conversation about the city's total debt and the school district's total debt. Because pension is not the only debt that the school district has. The school district has taken out uh, toxic loans. They owe billions of dollars in debt and billions of that, or at least a billion of that, is an interest alone. And yet you never hear them talk about that as a problem. They talk about pension debt as something that they cannot deal with, that's unsustainable. But they never talk about the debt they owe to banks as something that's unsustainable, even though they continue to borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. And so what it looks like is that he wants to pay the banks everything he owes them. He wants to pay everyone. He wants to pay the banks. He wants to pay Goldman Sachs. He wants to pay Pritzker. He wants to pay Pritzker, the Pritzker Group. He wants to pay Northern Trust. He wants to pay everyone the debt he owes except one group of people. And those are the people who actually worked for what they're owed. Well, let's talk about the people who work for what they're owed. How would you deal with their pension shortfall? And so we have to have an honest conversation. One of the things I learned from Tony Preckwinkle and watching her through this soda tax debacle is that you can have all the ideas you want, but if you don't engage the public in a conversation about the fiscal state of the body that you're over, in this case it's the city or the school district, if you don't engage them in the process of coming up with solutions, you can have all the solutions you want, but when you try to institute them, if you haven't gotten public buy-in, you're going to fail. And so what would you try to get the public uh, to buy into? For example, uh, I, I mistake, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but you appear to be shaking your head in agreement when Ralph Martyr was talking about a graduated income tax and expanding the sales tax. Are those two things that you'd be in favor of? All of them are viable options, absolutely. But you have to get the public involved and uh, uh, you have to get their buy-in. You can't just 
try and do it by fiat. But you do expect, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, you do expect the need for increased revenue by way of taxes in some form or another. I think everybody knows there's no way around that. Now, politicians don't like to say that, but that's the truth. One possible revenue source of the city is the uh, prospect of a casino. Is that something you would be in favor of? I am not in favor of any regressive revenue. Uh, the people who go to casinos are usually poor people. Uh, rich, rich people, the, 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 place, the, people who, the places that the money's at, the people who have the money typically don't go to casinos. We have a, a revenue collection system that relies on squeezing as much money as possible out of people who barely have enough to last to the end of the month, and we ignore those people who have more money than they can spend in their entire lifetimes. We have to have progressive sources of revenue, and I don't think casinos fit that description. As you know, former police superintendent Gary McCarthy has also thrown his hat in the ring. How would you address violence in Chicago, particularly gun violence? So when we look at violence, you know, I, I grew up, as you told me you were listening to the piece this morning, I grew up in slums uh, most of my life. And my mother would send me away from those slums to a working class section of West Inglewood so that I wouldn't be around that violence. Two black neighborhoods, but one is entirely different. And the difference between the slum that I grew up in and the West Inglewood neighborhood where my grandparents were was that everybody had access to work. You know, my grandfather worked for Consolidated Freightway, Freightways, my grandmother worked for Michael Reese Hospital, my best friend down the street's father worked for the railroad across the street, the woman who I eventually married when I was seven, uh, who I met when I was seven years old, her father worked for Acme Steel and her mother worked for a chemical plant. People had access to jobs and so they did not have to get involved in an alternative or black market economy. If we don't fix the economy, we're not going to fix violence uh, and the other thing is education in schools. If our children in Chicago public schools had access to the kind of education that Rahm's kids get at the University of Chicago, how many kids are going to get that kind of education and then go and pick up a gun? So we have, to, we have to invest in our schools and we have to invest in employment. That's where I'll have to leave it. Troy LaRavier, thank you for joining us. Very much appreciate it. Thank you.